the present uh, lecture involves the, the years, the period between 1780 to 1856. That is to say, the birth of the classic guitar of Italy to the death of Caspar Joseph Merz, one of the last great guitarists of the Romantic period. As it is very well known at that time, a new era began in Spain with Antonio de Torres and the Spanish guitar school led by Francisco Tarraga and his uh, disciples. It must say to above all that uh, the Baroque guitar and related instruments such as the guitar abate uh, remained in use throughout the 19th century and as we shall see many five courses guitar were adapted to single strings during the late 18th century. So when uh, when Mauro Giuliani was born in 1781, the classic guitar with single strings was already in use in both France and Italy, where the instrument was known as guitar francese. Uh, the Neapolitan guitarist Federico Moretti published several versions of his guitar method, either for single or double strings. Uh, since 1787 to 1807 in, uh, in, uh, in both Naples and Madrid. And judging from his, his own words, Moretti himself played the guitar with seven single strings. Uh, he said in Spanish, Aunque yo uso de la guitarra de siete órdenes sencillos, me ha parecido más oportuno acomodar estos principios para la de seis órdenes. Por ser la que se toca generalmente en España. Esta misma razón me obligó a imprimirlos en italiano en el año 1792, adaptados a la guitarra de cinco órdenes, pues en aquel tiempo ni aún la de seis se conocía en Italia. So, I'm referring more precisely to this instrument. Um, according to uh, Simon Monitor, for instance, the Italians were probably responsible for the addition of the sixth string. This is said in uh, his uh, guitar sonata op. 7. Große sonata für die guitar line, als ob eine besseren behandlung these instruments. For the Simon Morita, in Wien, 1806. And indeed, uh, a considerable amount of music intended for guitar finches was already in situation in about 1785 in manuscripts and printed editions, mostly from Naples and Venice, in which many of them clearly demonstrates the use of a five-string guitar, avoiding the low E, particularly the, the repertoire of voice and guitar. Also, nice uh, solo guitar music by Antonio Nava, Le Stazione de Lano, that's for Nicola Paganini's works on guitar solo. Uh, here we see uh, some of them. Uh, one guitar by Badagini, um, uh, I think. Carlo <coughs> Badagini, made in Torino in 1794. And one manuscript in my collection, Arietta con guitarra francese del signor Maestro Trento. Vittorio Trento was an opera composer prolific opera composer who died uh, coincidentally in, uh, in Lisbon. Um, and uh, it, what is interesting to me is the, the rhythm on the guitar, despite the, the manuscript which, which is not dated, but is about, uh, must be about 1800, more or less, is a good date to fix uh, the manuscript. And the rhythm, the rhythm suggests, suggests still uh, a way of playing in, uh, in the Rajya style like uh, in, the, in a guitar of a tape or a, a five-course guitar. But it's definitely for, for uh, the guitar of Francesa, which is a, a new instrument at that, that time, in order to make a single distinction between uh, uh, the other instruments with double strings. Now, uh, the exact year of the use of single strings is not known. It's not known exactly the, the year, but it seems most likely that it occurred in about 1770. 
under the influence of the French uh, opera and the, the vogue of the French romance. In the, for instance, in the 1775, the French painter François Hubert Bouet made a famous portrait of Clotilde de France. In, uh, in, in such painting, the guitar with five single strings is depicted. And the first method for five string guitar was published in Paris in um, 1777 by uh, Giacomo Merkin. However, it must be remembered that Merkin was, uh, was born in Brescia, Italy, as is mentioned in Fetis and in other dictionaries. So far, four, five uh, <coughs> more manuscripts here before, before to move on to uh, another collection in my, uh, that I have. Uh, several arias, 12 arias with, with guitar accompaniments from the same uh, Maestro Trento. And on the right, uh, a manuscript attributed to Giovanni Pagiero, an autograph by Pagiero, in which we see the guitar accompaniment. It's, it's not uh, very clear, but there's no uh, sixth string again. And uh, this one is, a, is the first edition of um, a good combination, uh, and quite rare to see actually, with two guitars and, uh, and voice, with the different voices, male voices or women voices. For two guitars, sometimes with uh, one guitar, a violin, and uh, a voice as well. And this edition is from 1786 and not 1792, uh, as it is uh, mentioned by, uh, by Heck and other, other scholars. This is actually from, uh, from uh, 1786, which is important. Some years before, we have already the, the, the five string guitar. It is dedicated to one uh, Milady Hamilton. Hamilton. So, what's the story behind this score? Hamilton, uh, William Hamilton, was a famous archaeologist and volcanologist and collector and rich man who went to Naples for. Uh, as a diplomat or something like that. And uh, Hamilton is his second wife. Is uh, her name? Her name it was um, Emma Hart, I think. And, but she she was she will be best remembered later because of the scandal, <laughs> a sexual scandal with North Lord Nelson. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the other Lord Nelson. <laughs> But she was a, of course, she must have been a, a wonderful woman, but very beautiful, and uh, she played several instruments, and uh, there are many paintings of her. Uh, uh, and Giuseppe Aprile was a, a good composer too, a cast art composer. I would like to, <laughs> to say, the cast, uh, soprano, cast art, Giuseppe Aprile. This is a, this guitar is depicted in the in the Lisbon Music Museum. It's a, it's a Petit Jean, which is in Lisbon. If you have the, the chance to go to Lisbon and to see, okay. Where am I? Ah. So um, I, I was talking about the, the four five-string guitars of Italian origin. The one Ferdinando Galliano Filius Nicolai which uh, don't exist anymore, we don't, we don't know, but the, the picture exists and uh, is, 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 um, is in several books. It was made in Naples in uh, 1774. Then Giovanni Battista Fabricatore, two, two examples uh, from uh, 1792 and 1801 respectively, and this one, Carlo Guadagnini, Torino, 1794. Now, uh, I would like to, to talk about uh, Portugal, then, is the first page. This is the Antonio de Silva, it seems reasonable and, uh, and appropriate to talk about him since he's on the concert program. Am I right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. 
So Antonio Lucia White was born in, uh, in Porto. He was a cattle master in Germany. Um, chapel master. Master de Capella. Natural da cidade de Porto, from Porto. I don't have the dates of birth and death now, right now. Um, um, he composed this, uh, he wrote this, uh, this, uh, this uh, guitar method, <coughs> which is intended for the so-called English guitar. And uh, the English guitar is characterized by uh, four double strings in unison and two basses, single, two, two single strings for the basses. And so the repertoire in Portugal was the good repertoire, was dominated by a uh, long time by the English guitar, although the instrument never then became uh, exactly popular, unlike the, the, the Spanish guitar. Uh, it was, um, it's a, a pear-shaped instrument, everyone can see, with wire strings, wire strings. So the repertoire was dominated by this instrument, the viola francese, which is a translation of guitar and chairs in Portugal, uh, as it was called, and the modinha, a type of sentimental song very much in vogue in Portugal. As rightly said by the Portuguese musicologist Mr. Rui Villeneuve, it is a repertoire that tends to be rather simple in nature and relatively easy to perform, thus feeding the average taste and skills of the middle class circles for which it was intended. I think more or less it can, it can be said about the production in Paris, uh, Naples, in the place, but uh, uh, Vienna, of course. The most, a grand, uh, a grand deal of the repertoire is, is, has uh, the same characteristics. The English traveler, a nobleman, Mr. William Beckford, who wrote the journal during his stay in Portugal and Spain, left us several accounts worthy of mention about the Modinias. Those who have never heard Modinias must and will remain ignorant of the most voluptuous and bewitching music that never existed, that ever existed. As to myself, I must confess, I am a slave to Modinias, and when I think of them, I cannot endure the idea of quitting poetry. So, can we hear now precisely a modinha?
So, um, sadly, as for the classic guitar, Portugal lagged furthest behind, owing its geographic isolation from the rest of Europe, and no substantial repertoire was published for it. This is a bit dangerous to say, but I'm quite sure. Otherwise, it will be a already in the, in the music, in the, in the history of Portuguese music, there are a very, very good deal of books, uh, but nothing is there. In Lisbon, uh, in 1752, João Lake Peter Rocha published his book entitled Lisão Instrumental Viola Portuguesa, which is actually a translation or even a plagiarism of Juan Carlos Yamat's guitar tune. Published in, uh, first published in 1596. The later publications include uh, some waltzes for flute and violin or guitar company. Published in Lisbon in 1818 by one Virgil Ravallo, whose name uh, seems to be uh, rather Italian than, than, than Portuguese. One anonymous method entitled Art Musica Portuguesa, uh, the Musica published in Braga in 1954. 39, uh, sorry, Manuel Nunes Aguedo, not to be confused with Aguardo. Um, Method General para Viola Francesa, again Viola Francesa, used uh, quite often in, uh, in our country. Adolfo Alasquen, Method Elementar, Cedro das Neves, again Method Elementar, Method Fácil, that is to say, easy music. For the for the clientele, okay, of the, which is uh, composed of, uh, almost exclusively by the amateurs. Um, so this uh, this is what what we have. Not everything, but I never seen in my life a good sonata in sonata form by a Portuguese composer apart from a real, which is a different case. Never seen the guitar concerto, never seen um, demanding chamber music with guitar, with guitar, which can accompany you know, and, and play you know, difficult parts. Um, what I saw so far is almost exclusively undemanding music with the, with the classical guitar from this time course, and uh, a lot of songs, hundreds, maybe thousands of songs, with the same principles, criteria, with the same criteria, easy music, to, easy to sell, uh, easy. Um, Sorry, I'm not exactly accustomed to do this, uh, to practice a lot, <laughs> but it's okay. This is a, again a, 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 French, a French guitar method by Loisy. Somebody has find, find out his, his real name, which is Francois, and not Charles. I don't remember who. This is intended again for five string guitar. And uh, it is easy to see a ten tuning pegs, ten tuning pegs of the, the, the old baroque guitar on the, the new instrument, the single strings. Okay. Now, uh, one of my Portuguese favorite themes. Is, uh, this guy, Antonio da Costa, which has been too much neglected so far. It is the, the earliest known source of a Portuguese guitarist of the late 18th century. It is attributed to uh, the above Antonio da Costa, a monk who met the renowned music historian Charles Bernard. Their encounter took place in Vienna in about 1772. His guitar music 
unfortunately remains unknown, but there is a manuscript for five cross guitar in the collection of Portuguese guitarist Paul Galvan, with the initials A, Dot, D, C, allegedly once belonging to him. However, the, this, that manuscript, has been recently considered as a work of doubtful authenticity. Uh, Antonio da Costa composed also, he was a, a, a particularly, particularly uh, skilled in the violin too. And uh, he composed for, for three, three violins. There are manuscripts in the, in the Austin Library, violin duets in Berlin, and uh, a motet with figured bass in Venice, and two versions of another motet. Um, we know, of course, some sacred music by uh, several guitarists, such as. Uh, you know the song of Matik, Diabel. If I'm not wrong, he composed about uh, 15 masses. And he studied with the uh, Joseph Haydn brother, Michael Haydn. So, according to Fred uh, was Fred Lopsgras was perhaps our best composer of the 20th century. He composed as well. He's composed to, for the guitar some masterpieces, uh, including. And uh, according to him, Antonio da Costa was born in Porto in 1714 and died in Vienna, where he spent the last years of his life in about 1780. Charles Bernier left us several accounts during his uh, Vienna stay. He plays very well on the large Spanish guitar, though in a very peculiar style with little melody, but with respect to harmony and modulation in the most pleasing and original manner. This about is the extraordinary musician that I mentioned before, who, disdaining to follow the steps of others, has struck out a new road, both as a composer and performer, which is, it is uh, wholly impossible to describe. All I can say of his productions is that in them melody is less attended to than harmony and uncommon moderation. However, his music, when well executed, which happens but seldom, has a very singular and pleasing effect. But it is certainly too much work of art to afford great delight to many ears, the those of the Lord. Is my English uh, enough clear for you, Bob? So um, this descri description matches perfectly with the uh, about his own testimony in one of, of his letters. Um, that I play the guitar well, according to some people, and that I compose for a violin, guitar, voice, with great skill, depth, and even good taste. As for the guitar, those who like it very much confess that I play it in a way that it can please few people due to the excessive softness of the voice that I take from it and of the pieces themselves. As for the compositions, I, I will only tell you that no one knows how to sing or to play them. And in this regard, Bernay, in turn, left us another very important testimony. After dinner, the duet for two violins by the Abbat was tried by himself and Mr. Tarte, an excellent player and a good musician. This performer is remarkably happy in the composition of ballet mm -hmm. and pantomime music for the theatre. But the Abbat Costas duo was so difficult, both in time and style, that it was never well performed after 20 or 30 trials. So, so it seems to me that, judging by Costa's own testimony and Bernie's, his music must have had a few followers in view of the difficulties of the pieces that His music also deserved the attention of the violinist Pietro Nardini, with whom he is known to have played, <coughs> and Giovanni Battista Martino, Martini, better known as Padre Martini of Bologna. He also met Gluck, Gassman, Wagenzeil, 
Giuseppe Tartini and mm -hmm. other celebrities of the Vienna classical era. Giovanni was a poor man, a poor man, and lived hungry with only 30 kreuzer, while his friends even about 60 florins, 1600 florins. And this may partly explain why his music was never published and remained so long in obscurity. Without Bernie's testimony, we would probably know nothing about Antonio Costa, since all life of bibliography always mentions the present state of music as the Bernie's current source. Finally, there is some correspondence of Antonio Costa change with Padre Martin and with the violinist Tertini whose letters are kept in Bologna at the Civico Museo Bibliografico Musicale. So, so this is uh, some of his, of Antonio da Costa's sacred, sacred music. It is normal that he composed sacred music since he was uh, a priest, but it's uh, unfortunately no guitar music so far. <coughs> Okay, the next and significant <coughs> guitarist is Antonio Abre, who, according to several sources, was better known in Spain as El Portuguese. Spain, he spent many years of his life in Spain, and his uh, remarkable guitar method was published in Salamanca in 1799, in collaboration with one Victor Pliego. I wonder, by the way, how much text belongs to Pliego. But 1799 is a good date. Many, many other Spaniards published books, as you said, last time. Um, so, um, according to the tradition in the, in the Iberian Peninsula, Abre um, works were conceived for five or six crossbitter, an instrument which, according to Francois de Fossa, remained in use in Spain at that time. Il ne faut pas oublier que M. Aguado écrit en Espagne, où la double corde est encore en usage. This is the French translation of Aguado's method by uh, François de Fosse and published in Paris in 1826. Some of Abreu, uh, Abreu's works survived, fortunately, survived mostly in manuscripts and are partly available at the Real Conservatorio Superior de Musica. De Madrid, through a man resources, I'm sure you can, you can find them easily. His guitar music is excellent and deserves to be played and can be compared to that of his contemporaries, <coughs> such as Fernando Ferrandier, Isidro Laporta, or Federico Moretti. And the, the guitar on the right is a Juan Muñoz guitar, made in Madrid in 1850. Very similar, sometimes very similar to, to uh, Aguados. So I can read the text in Spanish or English, as you wish. Spanish is uh, so fun. So fun. Let me read in Spanish. Uno de los medios para tocar y pedir las cuerdas de la guitarra son las uñas, a las cuales, después de cortadas con las ticheras, lo que sea necesario, se afilarán y compondrán por los lados con una leche o pizzarita suave, de suerte que han de quedar limpias y afiladas, sin los tropiezos que suelen quedar después de cortadas, y de este modo no impiden al ejecutar figuras y carreras vivas. No deben estar longas ni muy cortas, porque si están largas, fácilmente se encorvan y al gerir se detienen las cuerdas. Si son cortas, no cazan las cuerdas. Y así deben estar las uñas en un metro y que más esté en, en figura redonda que puntiagudas. Los maestros antiguos de guitarra dicen que se deben sacar el tono a la guitarra limpio, sonoro y claro, sin arrañar las cuerdas, con que suponen que se deben tocar con uñas. Me ha parecido poner esto porque... Me ha parecido poner esto porque hay algunos que sin saber lo que es tocar guitarra afirman que han visto y aún se debe tocar con las yemas de los dedos. Una particularidad no hace regla general, y es cierto que el que se acostumbra saldrá con ello. 
Yo creo que esto mismo decir esto de la tierra de los dedos, como si dijésemos que para tocar con mucho primor y delicadeza el violín, en lugar de dar a las sedas del arco con la pez que se le da, se untasen las cuerdas con aceite, sebo o enjodía de gallina. Y así saldrían más claras las voces. <risa> Would you like to say to, to, to summarize? Well, no, 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 no. It's, it's, it's very good. It's a, <laughs> it deserves to. to. It's an explanation of how they cut the, the, the nails. The nails, yeah. yeah. Uh, at the end, uh, I thought of, of saying this because there are some who, without knowing what they are playing, is a firm that they have seen and that they should even be played in their field. The particularity <coughs> doesn't make a general rule, and it is certain that he who is accustomed to it will do it. I think it's the same to say this of the fingertips as we, as if we were to say that to play the violin with great diligence and delicacy, instead of hitting the bristles of the bow with the wax that is added to it. The results would be smeared with oil, tallow, or chicken fat, and thus the bodies would come out softer. Or oh, if he possessed numerous retotum, that is to say, uh, in Latin, but a great number of fools. <laughs> Fantastic, isn't it? In contrast to Abreu and Aguado, of course, uh, Fernando Sor doesn't recommend the names. <coughs> Never in my life have I heard a guitarist whose brain was supported if he played with the nails. The nails can produce the very few gradations in the quality of the sound. The piano passages can never be singing, nor the fortis sufficiently full. Their performance is to mine what the harpsichord was in comparison to the piano forte. The piano passages were always genuine. And in the fortis, the notes of the keys predominated over the sound of the waters. So, despite the use of the finger nails by great guitarists such as Metz, Antoine de Loyer, Trinidad Huerta, or Julian Arcas, the fingertip technique was the norm in the, the early 19th century, and source concept of sound was followed by Carcassi, Morito, and Zani de Ferranti to name only the best known guitarists. Furthermore, the fingertip technique continued to be used throughout the 20th century by the leading guitarist and composer, Emilio Pujol, who taught for more than 20 years at the National Conservatory of Lisbon. Nowadays, of course, the technique is regarded mostly in the context of the historical performance practice. Before to change the subject, this uh, is another six chord guitar by Antonio Ducent Vieira, made in Lisbon, late 18th century perhaps. It is not dated. And it is on display in Oxford at the Ashmore Museum. The bridge is not original, it was uh, replaced. And we think that this instrument. Uh, um, have had five courses gathered in two triple strings and three double, exactly like uh, Manuel de Bachon Rivet, this, uh, this author, made in uh, 1789. You can see clearly three double strings. Mm -hmm. The thinner was the first to be plucked, and the other in unison. Three strings for the basses and, uh, and uh, three, two strings for the basses and three uh, for the, the others. This is called also the um, the viola tuaya, the famous viola tuaya, which you don't have any, enough material. Actually, uh, he was a non-professional guitarist, as he described himself. Um, 
So the field of query was a variant of, for sure, a variant of the five course interval. Very popular in project with its characteristic three dot string on the fourth and fifth courses. This tuning shaft is also called <coughs> Ala Rodrigo and was previously shown in Michel Corret's guitar tutorial, Les Dons d'Apollon, Paris 1763. Although elementary in nature, the book is interesting for its particular string tuning on the chords, scales, as well as some music at the end, with one or two more inch, with guitar accompaniment. Um, as far as I know, no other records have been found on the other. I might be wrong. And this is... Uh, now, I would like to just finish. Finish to talk a bit on. Uh, ah, this is interesting too. This is a 16 guitar by Louis Panorama with a Fender Stratton system, the same system used by later by Antonio de Torres. I think Torres made his first guitar in about uh, 1855 or 1854. I'm not sure. So he follows the same with seven bars in the panel of guitar. Mm -hmm. This is a, a Vinaccia, an Italian guitar, really nice. It's something oh, I already talked about, I think. This is. Uh, ah, okay. Now, just a little bit on the, an instrument which uh, I like very much too, which is. The Terz, the Terz guitar. This is an announcement in the Wiener Zeitung on the right. <coughs> and the, the first edition of Giuliani's guitar concerto, published in 1822. <coughs> no less than five different editions were, were published at that time for uh, two guitars, for guitar and pianoforte, for guitar and string quartets. For orchestra, one uh, movement for guitar solo, etc. It was a very, very popular and very cherished at that time. The Terz guitar was created in Vienna in about uh, 1812, which is the date of uh, Simon Monitor's great guitar. Monitor. <coughs> When we talk about the, the Capotasto, but never in the Terz guitar. So it seems that uh, it appears maybe, a light, maybe shortly after Moritz's guitar, <coughs> which exists in German, for German people, and in French. But the French translation is not <coughs> all the time very well translated. So this instrument is, uh, <coughs> is tuned uh, uh, a minor third higher than the normal guitar. From the 6 to the chantrel G, G, C, F, uh, B flat, G, and G. Um, Mauro Giuliani, of course, is, 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 uh, is, is involved with the, with the, the, the Kertz guitar, but we don't know if he's uh, the developer of the first Kertz guitar. If he influenced the, the guitar makers in the <coughs> exactly. It is sometimes attributed to him, you are know, not sure, but for the lack of evidence. So, to need to raise the chanterelle to G on a normal guitar of 63, normal romantic guitar of 63, of string that's that obliges the guitarist to use a capodastro on the third fret, otherwise, the, the string could easily break <coughs> due to the required tension. But that's a problem that tends to disappear on a Terz guitar whose string length 
is established as 56 centimeters. However, the, the capodaster only partially solves the problem, since many notes are to be played in the highest positions on the fingerboard. In, uh, in any case, it will be preferable to use a third guitar instead of a guitar provided with a capodaster. For, for all reasons. Uh, and uh, Giuliani himself is quite clear in uh, La Liga Notturna, Opus 69. Col capotasto alla terza posizione, per facilitare di molto, poi si servirà di una terza chitarra. That's what he said. The, when I started to, uh, to make my own research on, the, on the, this instrument, I was able to find out at that time uh, almost 400 pieces from that guitar, or either for, uh, uh, including guitar solos, uh, but mostly uh, guitar duets, several chamber music combinations, incredible, like uh, human serenades. And uh, guitar concertos, like Padovetic, also two mm -hmm. concertos. And uh, this, not this one, this is not a guitar concert, the previous one. And, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this concert. For instance, this, uh, to give, just to give you an idea of the, the bright sound of the text which was very, very much appreciated in chamber music and sounds. Uh, here is a, a passage of the, the Polonaise, the last movement of Opus 17, guitar concert. <laughs> sans que le corps de casse. La longueur de la corde étant moindre que celle des autres. Les touches étant beaucoup plus rapprochées, facilite les positions, ce qui influe sur les progrès de l'élève. En l'accordant sur le diapason ordinaire, on accompagne la voix et on fait sa partie avec d'autres instruments, comme avec les autres guitares. La qualité de toute l'étendue de cet instrument est remarquable et approche beaucoup du piano. Now, in English, I advise and recommend to amateurs that they use the so-called Sagrini guitar, or Terz guitar, so named because it can be raised a third higher than the usual pitch, which can be done without breaking the strings. The length of the guitar being less than that of the others, the frets being much closer together, facilitating the positions 
which affects the progress. By changing it to the usual pitch, we can accompany the voice and play our part with other instruments, just like the other guitars can do. The sound quality throughout the range of this instrument is remarkable and very close to the pianoforte. Paris, 1826. So we can do everything in this instrument. To use, we can use it as a, as a real jazz guitar or put on it uh, normal guitar strings and, uh, and play. And I made the, the experience already and I published uh, a Karuli uh, uh, guitar duet with a friend on YouTube. And it works absolutely amazing. Thank you.